Okay guys, over the past couple of weeks, I have received lots of emails from people that are concerned about the coronavirus. Now, whether you're currently selling on Amazon or are considering starting an Amazon FBA business, you need to be aware of the coronavirus and what impact it can potentially have. Now, this video, there's gonna be absolutely no scaremongering. I'm not gonna cover the virus itself. What I wanna do, I wanna cover four things. Firstly, I wanna look at Amazon and their official statement on the matter. Secondly, I wanna cover what my supplier has said. Um, I then wanna look at what freight forwarders have also said. Then finally, I want to give you a list of things that I believe that you can do to help mitigate the risk with your Amazon FBA business. So the first thing, an Amazon's official statement from one of the largest businesses in the world, which is no doubt gonna be impacted by what is happening. Their official statement is absolutely nothing. I have not received any communication from Amazon regarding this. The only email received from Amazon in the past week, and that is an email regarding the Amazon FBA fee increases from April 2020. So good job, Amazon. Hopefully they will jump on this and announce something to the sellers in the coming weeks. The next thing I want to discuss, and that is what my supplier has said. Now I contacted my suppliers a few days ago to ask them kind of what's happening, you know, what are your lead times like at the moment, what's going on with the virus? And the first thing she said is I can't actually give you any lead times at the moment. A lot of stuff is still up in the air. Uh, they haven't returned from Chinese New Year yet. Um, at the moment they're pretty much on lockdown, so they are not allowed to actually go out and do anything. They pretty much stay at home until they return to work. She also said that even if the factory does reopen next week, that lead times are still very much going to be up in the air because there's certain things outside of their control. For example, just because the factory's reopened doesn't mean that the employees are going to be there. For example, some employees may be in quarantine zones and are actually allowed to leave to come and work. So a lot of their workers are from other cities. And there's also the issue some workers may not want to return to work and take that risk. And there's also the fact that the Chinese government may announce something which may again delay this factory reopen or the workers return to work next week. Plus on top of that, you're going to have the backlog from the factories being closed for the Chinese New Year, which happens every year. You know, they shut from anywhere from three to four weeks, usually between January and February. So they've got that backlog, plus the fact they've been shut for an additional week at least. And then there's going to be lots of people who are going to be ordering additional stock, trying to make sure that they don't get out of stock later on in the year. So I can imagine things are gonna get very, very interesting over the next week or two with regard to supply and demand and trying to arrange the manufacturing time within the factory and also then get that shipment delivered as well. This brings me on to my freight forwarder. Now they've been really good, they've been really proactive and have been in contact with me a number of times and actually have a website which is updated almost on a daily basis of what is happening. So they're a good example to Amazon of how to do this and hopefully Amazon will follow suit at some point. So what my freight forwarder have basically said is there's a few things you need to look at. One is air freight, then you've got sea freight and then also actually what's going on outside of that as well. So for example, with air freight, uh, Transatlantic and Trans-Pacific air freight is down 40% at the moment. You would have heard lots of announcements on the news about passenger planes being suspended between China and Europe, um, but it also applies to some of the freight planes as well. So it's very important if you're using air freight as a shipping method that you need to be prepared to expect delays. This also applies to sea freight. Initially, I heard they had created some blank sailings, which I thought was additional capacity. However, actually blank sailings means that our book that have been cancelled so there's actually less capacity so there's going to be less capacity on both air freight and sea freight so there's definitely going to be delays and there's definitely going to be price increases now the chinese ministry of transport has been urging all ports to stay open however due to the lack of truck drivers and also stevedores who are the people that load and unload shipping containers there are delays at pretty much all of the ports and due to this a lot of the shipping yards are declaring force majeure which is basically them saying look due to forces outside of our control we can breach the contracts that we currently have and we don't have to fulfill them in time. So there are definitely gonna be delays, there are definitely gonna be price increases, so definitely reach out to your freight forwarder to speak to them about this. So finally, what can you do? Well, if you are considering starting an FBA business or you're at the very, very early part of your business, I would recommend waiting for a couple of weeks. Now, extending the Chinese New Year was actually quite an easy thing for the Chinese government to do because people are off work and an extra week wasn't too bad. However, at the moment, they need to find a way to allow people to return to work and for the country to function as well as also trying to prevent the spread of this virus. So I think in the next week or two, we're gonna kind of get a better idea of how this is gonna be handled long-term. And it will also give you a better idea of what delays will be like with manufacturers and with freight forwarders and stuff like that. So I'd say just give it a week or two. Hopefully there'll be some more announcements over the coming weeks. And then you will know for sure whether you're safe to start your FBA business, just being aware that there's gonna be delays and additional costs, 
or whether it's better to hold off for a little bit of a longer period. Now, if you're already selling on Amazon, the first thing I would do is contact your supplier. Now, they may not reply this week due to the fact they're still on Chinese New Year. However, hopefully they'll reply next week. If not, and you've already contacted them, chase them up the latter part of next week to try and find out what's going on. They'll be able to give you a much better idea about what's going on in their region, because this is very, very region specific as to how this is gonna be handled across China. So speak to your supplier, see what they have to say, and then you can make a decision based on that. I would also strongly recommend contacting your freight forwarder they'll be able to provide regional advice to do with air shipping and sea shipping so it's very very important you contact both your supplier and your freight forwarder and then once you have that information you can make the decision that is right for your business now for me that decision is going to be ordering stock earlier than I usually would so I've just had a batch delivered to Amazon last week and that will probably last me around three months so generally I wouldn't be looking to order for another two to four weeks however what I'm going to do is I'm speaking to my supplier already and as soon as she gives me some lead times next week I'll be placing that order just to try and mitigate those delays as much as possible you want to do as much as you can to avoid going out of stock on Amazon now I've talked about this before um, and when I first started on Amazon I didn't kind of worry too much about going out of stock. However, I have seen recently, if you go out of stock even for a day, like I had this last week, I went out of stock for a day, Amazon are really, really penalizing your ranks. So make sure you can do everything you can to avoid going out of stock. Now you may find after speaking to your supplier and freight forwarder that things really aren't looking good, or maybe perhaps you just kind of want to mitigate your risk and don't want to be completely dependent on China, in which case you can consider sourcing from other areas. There are supplies available in the UK, Europe and America and other countries that you may be able to source your goods from. Now you might be able to get them quite as the low price as you currently do in China, but it's definitely something that's worth exploring as you need to make sure that your business, you kind of have a plan B for every area of your business. Now, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of the information in this video came from my freight forwarder. So I'm gonna pop up a link next to me. I'll also put it in the description below. And it's a really good website where you can get all of the latest information with regards to what is happening in China with the coronavirus and how it's impacting air freight and sea shipping. Also, if you aren't already a member, make sure you head over to fbaelite.com. We now have over 700 members and you can discuss the coronavirus as much as you want. And Finally, please like this video and hopefully it will go viral.